Hey everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And uh, I was uh, really honored to be one of a couple of people who pulled together the very first uh, vegan, completely vegan natural body building championship in the world. And um, it was such a joy to have that experience, to be with all of those other like-minded, like-hearted people. Uh, uh, you know, setting the stage and getting on stage to represent for a movement that is so much bigger than than we are about ourselves, but to to set a shining example for others too. But in that experience, I had the pleasure to meet some incredible people, and and one of them is my guest today, Jamal Collins. Uh, Jamal's got an amazing transformation story that uh, we're going to talk about here. As you can see, the pictures of his before and after are just incredible. And um, we're going to cover some of that. Jamal went on from that experience to go on to uh, twice. He's a two-time champion in physique and natural physique. And for those of you who don't understand, natural bodybuilding is very different than uh unnatural bodybuilding where they use steroids and uh, stimulants and, and all kinds of drugs and stuff like that. There's no limits to what they can use really. And, and natural body competitions are completely drug-free tested. And, um, and I think that's something that a lot of us take a lot of pride in. Um, but let's, let's go back to that, that first uh, day when you decided, Hey, maybe it's time for me to step on stage. What was it? What was the catalyst to say, all right, I love working out. You know, I'm proud of being uh, plant-based or vegan. What made that decision? Where was that day, that time, that person? Ah, so, <laughs> you know, I, I it's probably been something that's always kind of bubbled in the background for me. Um, my parents both worked out pretty regularly as a kid. When I was a kid, my dad could have competed. He was uh, he was good enough, or he to me, he looked like he, he should have been a bodybuilder. Um, and as once I started, well, about the time I turned 38, I was, I, one of the, the things that, um, one of the goals that I set was to be in the best shape of my life by the time I turned 40. And part of that was transitioning to veganism, uh, which helped with some health issues. Um, but then uh, there was a moment, it was five o'clock in the morning in October, I actually was on Instagram and I connected with Monk. <laughs> and, and it was the first time we had, well, we had met prior, but it was very brief. Um, so this, that was years before. And this time he was like, you know, he didn't remember that, but he was like, you know, you should compete. And he had seen some of my pictures on uh, Instagram and I was in no condition to compete at that point. Um, but he, and I was like competing, what, what, is, what do you mean by competing? And he's like, you know, bodybuilding. Um, and I told him, well, he's like, I'm, he told me he was doing this show. Uh, it was the first ever vegan bodybuilding championship and that it was happening in like eight weeks. And I was like, eight weeks, <laughs> that's not enough time. I just, I knew that I would need more time, but he convinced me to, uh, to join and he worked with me uh, and I hit the stage and that first experience was like no other. And I, I wanna thank you um, for being a part of that and creating that, that moment in history because it, it was, it was better than I ever could dream. Uh, being around like-minded people and everyone being so supportive. Um, I was kind of freaked out and scared, but, <laughs> um, but everyone made me feel really comfortable and it was, it was a great experience. And that just kind of, it just kind of went from there. <laughs> so let's back up just a little bit. Um, what, what is it that, I know you said you had some health challenges. Was, was that a driving force for you to, to becoming vegan? Um, so not initially, <laughs> uh, so that takes me back to, I think I was 34. Um, and I, uh, so that was about seven years ago. 
and I had gone in for a physical. My doctor told me that I was borderline pre-diabetic wow. and that I, um, my cholesterol was high and my blood pressure was high. Um, and she advised me to cut carbs <laughs> and told me that that should fix everything. Um, I did cut carbs and it didn't help the situation. <laughs> so I started over the years just kind of doing my own research. And, um, and then I happened upon a friend who was vegetarian who went vegan. And we started talking about it. He had me watch uh, Forks Over Knives. Cool. And, um, and I was like, hmm, you know, I, I think I could go vegetarian, but vegan, I don't know, that's, that's a bit extreme. I can't give up my cheese and I love eggs. <laughs> um, so I did go vegetarian for about four months um, and it felt great. Um, and I went on a business trip to the South, to New Orleans and found it very difficult to be vegetarian <laughs> in New Orleans. Um, and so I started like introducing fish back into my diet. Um, and then I kind of became more of like a flexitarian for a while. Um, I did the whole, you know, I would, I would cook vegetarian or vegan at home. And as I went out with my friends, I wouldn't restrict myself. Um, but then eventually one day I, I just, just from listening, like knowing how it felt to cut those things out um, and how my body reacted to it. I, I just had like an epiphany on this one day in July, 2017, where it's like, I, I need to know if this is not, if it's just a fluke that this is happening, that I feel great when I eat vegan food, or if it's something that's, that's really there. Um, at this point, my, my numbers were pretty much the same. I was still borderline pre-diabetic and all these other things. Um, but that day I was like, I just need to know. So I'm going to, I'm just going to eat vegan for a month. And I felt so amazing <laughs> that first month. <laughs> I was like, I'm never going back. <laughs> um, and within, I would say it was less than a year later, I had another physical and my doctor asked me, what are you doing? <laughs> and I told her, I was like, well, I just cut animal products out of my diet. And she's like, well, your numbers are great. It's like, they, like you, you, you have great numbers for someone who's half your age. And I was like, well, I, I attribute it to my diet. <laughs> yeah. And um, she, of course, then reminded me, well, you know, we can eat meat. I'm like, yeah, we can, but I choose not to. <laughs> and it's having a great impact on how I feel and my actual health. So I'm going to stick with it. And, and, that's, and that's great, great that you can you listen, listen to your to body. Your body. Mm -hmm. and, and, and not everybody, not everybody it, it pays that. Pays that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. wow. So it, it's uh, funny that um, uh, I, I met Monk online mm -hmm. and you know, I uh, said, you've got an amazing physique, man. You need to get on stage. And he's like, I've never. <laughs> and then he comes to you and says, man, you need to get on stage. And <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And that's great when we can um, applaud each other for our advances, for our accomplishments, and then go even further and say, let me help you. Mm -hmm. You know, let me help you. And and I know Monk's an incredible human being. One of my dearest friends, he's he's such a good person, such a giving person. Yes. And I know he has helped and supported a lot of people. Um, I love him having him as not only a friend, but on Team Clean Machine, uh, similar to an affiliation with you, mm -hmm. is just because that's the kind of people I love being with, people who are, to me, there's two people in the world, um, service to self people and service to others people. And look, for me, service to others is a way of giving to yourself because it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding when you see somebody else come alive or have a positive change, improve their health. Even just smile. Who doesn't like to see somebody else smile, you know? Yes. 
Uh, it's such a it's such a positive reward. It is in a way giving to yourself. You don't have to be a taker in this world. Mm -hmm. You can be a giver and get so much more out of life. Very it's true. So rewarding than that. So talk about going from that very first experience. And again, that was an an exceptional experience because you're on stage with 48 other vegans. Which, right. <laughs> <laughs> natural vegans on top of that who are in some of their best shapes of their life. And uh, what an experience that was. But to go from there from the traditional stage and, and some of your progress along the way, because from that day I saw you, I said, you've got something. I know you can take it. I know you will get your pro, pro card because you've got it. You've got that it factor. But it needed fine tuning. You needed to push harder and train harder. And you did that. And within a year, you're already on stage taking first. Talk about that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, from that day, that just like sparked something in me. And I was just... Um, I, I don't know what happened. It was just like, okay, I actually, I felt, I'm like, I love this. I, I want to do this. It combined. Um, so I'm, I'm not naturally like the type of person who likes the spotlight. <laughs> I'm more like behind the scenes. Um, but I do get some uh, pleasure in being on stage. And this combined like some of that performance um, part of me along with just, something that I actually enjoy, which was training. Mm -hmm. um, and just being able to highlight and see, see myself, how my body changed was just um, amazing, even in that short time frame that I trained before uh, the first competition. So I had, I think it was uh, five months from there to, to my next competition, which was with the uh, INBF. Um, and that was in Seattle. and. Um, I, I just pushed, I, <laughs> I was traveling a lot for work and I just, I made sure that I was able to eat right. And, uh, it required a lot of planning and a lot of discipline, um, and a lot of structure, which was actually good for me. I, I felt like I, it was a way for me to actually kind of improve on those things. Cause when I travel for work, I would just eat whatever and, you know, I wouldn't work out and I, I would kind of lose all the progress that I had made from mm -hmm. the times I was actually um, stable and at home. So this just made me do more of that. And I found, and, and having to um, actually train in different gyms <laughs> was mm -hmm. um, something I've actually started to enjoy, which I used to hate. Cause I'm like, I don't know where everything is. I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I just felt like I, I wouldn't get a good workout. So it helped me to um, actually just figure out those types of things and actually start making things that I used to dread, actually enjoy them. Um, so I hit the stage again and I was, I felt like I was ready. I was like, I put on quite a bit of, um, I think muscle at that point. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I, I think I was, I, when I competed at, um, at the vegan competition, I was like 180. At this one, I was like 192. And so I felt like very big. And, and leaner. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but then I got smacked down, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't place in the top five. Wow. I, um, you know, I, it, it, but I had a good time. So that, mm -hmm. That was fine. Um, I got really good feedback from the judges. They just said I wasn't lean enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to take their feedback and try it again a few months later. And lo and behold, I won the next competition. <laughs> I won the overall, which was, I, I actually wasn't sure if I was going to compete this time. Um, and when I got there, I I literally saw the competition and I was like, oh no, there's no way I'm winning. So I'm just gonna go out there and have a good time. <laughs> and that probably worked for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I felt like I've gone into, each time I've gone into a competition with that mind frame, I it, it takes the pressure off and I just enjoy myself. And it's it's worked in my favor. So both times that I've, 
had those types of experiences, I actually won. So it was, it's, it's been, it's been great. It's been a great experience. I, since that competition, I, I competed four times um, wow. additional. So it was like five times in a matter of a year. And I got four trophies. And, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and competing with guys that are like, you know, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years younger than me, I, it feels, it feels great. And being able to do it naturally and um, on a vegan diet um, is right. just a whole nother thing. Like I tell people I'm vegan and they're, they, you know, the guys I compete with and they're just like, how, how are you, <laughs> how do you get enough protein? How do you do this? And I'm just like, you know, I, I do the same thing everybody else does, but I just don't consume the animal products. It's like right. I can get protein from other sources. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that you know, that's the first question that most vegans get is where you get protein. And you know, you know, when I when I tell them the same place you do, they look at me kind of strange. Like, <laughs> well, I, I eat meat, and I said, yeah, but where does your meat get its protein from? Because animals don't make essential amino acids that make up protein. Right. They all come from plants. So mm -hmm. you and I are actually getting the protein from the exact same place, plants, because they're the only species on the planet that actually makes it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, you're just feeding your plant protein to an animal first and then killing the animal and stealing its plant protein. Right. It's it's funny. It's a learning process, but it's it's a process that there's still the vast majority of people don't know about, don't understand and don't believe. And that's part of our culture. And I think that's why it's so inspiring and important for us being out there, being on the stage with other non-vegans and, 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 and making that clear so that people ask the important questions. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, you know, in the natural bodybuilding uh, arena, I found it a lot very friendly. People are competing, of course, so they want to win. <laughs> but at the same time, they also want to learn. You know, I want to be better. The reason you you have enough guts usually to get on stage is because you want to be better. Right. You want to improve where you're at. And and to some degree, it's you competing against you. You're out there trying to bring your best performance. And I know I've gone off the stage taking second and said, damn, that's the best I've ever looked, though. And I've been really <laughs> proud about that. Yeah. You know, you know, may have beat me on size a little bit or whatever but I look the best I've ever looked and I'm stoked about that. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely your own, your own competition. Um, yes. And that's, that's usually the mind frame I go into it with. It's like, if I can get on the stage and I look better than I did last time, then that I've already won. <laughs> Indeed. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm 35 years vegan for the animals. I mean, they are dear to my heart. Any any being or species that is oppressed by others, I am 100% going to be there for vocally and, and live my lifestyle for. So, you know, when I really had to push to get into that shape, you know, I, I feel that three big keys in, in getting on stage is you have to be willing to do the intensity, you have to be willing to do the consistency, and you have to be willing to do the nutrient density. You have to feed the body what it needs to to repair itself properly. So in that intensity, you really have to push yourself hard because you think there are other people out there training with real intensity too. So you have to push even harder than that <laughs> if you're going to beat them, if you're going to come in in better shape, if you're going to preserve more muscle and stay leaner, you really have to go an extra mile in order to be competitive, in order to be just competitive on stage, much less take that championship trophy. Right. And for me, I've really had to dig deep where pushing through pain, like just wanting to quit, my body just screaming at me, like, what are you doing this for? All the things going on in my mind, God, just stop. You don't need to do this anymore. You're 50 years plus years old. You can quit. Stop doing this. <laughs> All of the excuses going through my head. And then my heart saying, no, you're out there representing veganism. Be the best you can be for the animals. Because mm -hmm. if you can inspire somebody, somebody sees you and says, wow, how do I get like that? And they find out you're vegan and they change. That's an animal's life saved. That's an animal's life that is not suffering. And for me, 
all the rest of that pain, all that mental chatter just goes away when I remember what I'm doing this for. And I just dig in even more. I'm doing it for them, you know? Right, right. And, and it's a different experience um, than just going up and, you know, trying to say, oh, I'm the best build or whatever. And I'm going to beat all the rest of it. It's a different mental experience when you're coming at it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, it, so for me, my, my start in veganism was more about health. But honestly, I don't think that that's um that's really enough to, to sustain <laughs> um i mean we do a ton of things that are unhealthy <laughs> even though we know that they're unhealthy um so i had to over this time i've educated myself on animal agriculture and uh and its impact on the environment um and so it it it's been all of these things combined that really have made this um, a lifelong thing for me, where it's it's not just you know here in the moment. It's like I I remember you know, and and I think about it in everything that I do. So I was I bought my place a couple years ago, and when I was furnishing it, it's like I I remember going to the store and you know looking at furniture and having salespeople try to push me into buying leather, and I'm like no that. That does not, <laughs> for ethical reasons, I will not buy leather. Right. Um, and having to explain those things to people to where they understand that this isn't just a diet. Right. It right. it is more than that. It's a it's a lifestyle. It's it's about and I think about it in every decision that I make. And it's it's my way of protesting things like animal cruelty. Um, and it that energy also, it, it's something that I think permeates and um, people like, you know, I show things on, on uh, social media and my friends who would never think are like, oh, I never thought about it that way. Um, we're, and I was thinking about this the other day, we're so far removed from what's on our plates <laughs> that we don't think about how it actually got there. And a lot of what has made this um, so important to me is that I actually question, um, mm -hmm. question, how did this get here? And, you know, can I justify actually being take, taking part in, you know, this process? And I just can't. I couldn't when it came to, you know, animal cruelty. I just couldn't. So how, how did your talk about your your experience training with Monk and getting some um, you know, some feedback from Monk from who's three time, you know, pro uh, yes. physique um, and, and how that experience shaped you. And what are some of the important takeaways that you got from his advice? And then as you've gone through the experience and become a champion uh, physique athlete yourself, what kind of advice do you feel like is, is good to pass on to others? Well, let's see, Monk is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've had the pleasure of training with him, so I know where you're coming from. Um, it's like, just when you think he has pushed you to the edge, he's going to push you even further. And, um, and that, the fact that I think that he, he reached out and he believed in me um, was huge for me. Um, mm -hmm. And just... You know he's a jokester, but he he's he's also about <laughs> business. So, um, and and he'll you know say you know something like, well, you know, that he's like ten years older than me, and he's like running circles around me, and use that to kind of get me to keep up. Um, but and so now I like hear him in my head when I'm in the gym and I'm working. That's great. Like, if, if, if ever I just want to give up or um, just stop and just make an excuse, it's just like you know what? It's like if Monk were here, we we'd be pushing through this. We we would. And so he's like always there with me nowadays. Um, awesome. For other people, you know, I. I always get asked, well, what's the secret? And to me, there really is no secret other than um, getting your mind and body in sync. Um, because your your mind will tell you as soon as you start to feel pain that 
stop. You should stop. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, what I tell myself these days is when I start to feel pain, it's, oh, that feels good. That feels good. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. This game's happening right here. Yes, yes. This is what's going to. This is what's gonna actually show up on stage. It's like right. those those reps where I wasn't feeling it. That's not gonna help me. But the stuff that <laughs> where it's actually starting to burn. It's like okay, I need to push even further if I want to be. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. Well, and that's that's the amazing uh, adaptation process of our body. Our body will adapt to everything. But if you get it to adapt to this point, and then you don't push it any further it'll park right there. You'll plateau. You won't go anymore. <laughs> and to get that, you really have to push through that. And then you have to push through that. Your body will only adapt in by building more muscle and more striations and more definition if you keep asking it more. Right. But you have to push more in order to get the body to respond more that's such an important piece i see people go in the gym all the time and you know they're working out you know five days a week but doing their three sets of 10 at the same weight they did for the last two years and they're like oh how come i'm not getting the gains you must be juicing and i'm like no <laughs> no it's look at the way i train Every day I'm trying to push myself to a better place. And yes. sometimes you can't, obviously you have physical limitations, but find different ways. And I change up my workouts constantly. Like I'll do bench for a couple of weeks. Then I'll do dumbbells and flies for a couple of weeks. Then I'll do machines for a couple of weeks. I'll do four straps. I'll do, you know, heavyweight train and then train lightweight until failure where I'll do huge volumes. Mm -hmm. Keep training it. You keep getting your body to adapt. And this is one of the ways you can push yourself instead of just adding more weight all the time because you obviously have a physical limitation um, to where that plateaus out pretty severely. But you can change the way your body adapts and still get progress. And I, I see that. You've got amazing progress. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the 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 big thing is before I met Monk, he told me I was working out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. we were training. It's a very different thing. Exactly. That is it in a nutshell. Yeah, like, yeah. When you go through like a training, real training, where you really are pushing yourself and you walk out of there so thoroughly exhausted, <laughs> so pumped. You feel like, like I get in the, I get into the car when I've done a true workout and I'm like, okay, I can't even reach the seat belt. You know, I like, I'm done. I'm toast. Right. Right. And so, but of course it's not all about the training nutrient nutrition is so key to getting our body to adapt in a tray. Look, you put crap in a car, what's it going to do? It's going to fail on you sooner or later, right? You can't put oil in the gas tank, even though they're both petroleum. Mm -hmm. It'll clog up your engine in no time. The same with our food. And so paying attention to that nutrition and as everyone knows who's gotten on stage, you have to adjust your diet to get the level of leanness. And um, so talk about that and, and how your nutrition evolved uh, that gets you to getting that championship trophy. Well, it, what's interesting is that, um, so nutrition, I, I feel like, I, just like with training, it's it's, been a lot of self-discovery, like what trying to figure out what works for me and what doesn't work for me, <laughs> and trying right. different things. Um, I and it's it's something that's I think like my training constantly evolving. Um, whereas you know in the beginning, when I first became vegan, it was more just like okay, I just need to make sure I eat enough calories because right. your body just or my body seems to process plant fast very quickly <laughs> so it's like at first i was like okay i have to have snacks with me at all times um but i once i started training and at that point it was like for the vegan competition i was just cutting so it was just like okay i'm just gonna cut my calories um and just make sure i eat as clean as possible no uh processed sugars which i love i i am <laughs> my downfall is sweets <laughs> Um, so I cut out all the desserts um, and just 
stuck to a whole food plant-based diet. Um, and over time, I've tried different things. Uh, as of late, I'm, I'm doing more intermittent fasting, which is what helped me get to that point of where I was lean enough to win that competition. Um, and the cutting of calories can be quite difficult. <laughs> Actually, I think I saw, um, I, I think, yeah, you guys were at a uh, veg fest in Southern California mm -hmm. and I was getting ready for uh, that competition that I won. And <laughs> I wanted to eat everything in sight at that point, <laughs> but I was good. I didn't do it. Um, figuring out also, I think a lot of times, you know, because um, I was traveling at that point as well, like figuring out where can I eat uh, that won't really throw my diet off was right. really important for me. So, um, you know, grocery stores versus fast food places. Like, you know, if, if I had, if I didn't have a choice and I had to go to a fast food restaurant, it'd be like a Chipotle where I could just get rice and beans or something. Right. <laughs> or, um, even I, I had gone to El Pollo Loco. We have this chicken, uh, rotisserie chicken restaurant here. And I would just get sides. I would get their broccoli, which was steamed, right. and rice and beans, and I'd be good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it really focusing on getting that nutrient-dense stuff was really important for me. Uh, clean machine products have definitely helped. <laughs> so um, the, the green protein, which yeah. I recommend to everybody, um, the BCAAs, just making sure to get those nutrients. And um, it, it has really helped because I could just put it in a jar, take it with me, um, and it, it's perfect. Yeah. And that's great. And, and that dieting part is you know, when people say, what's the toughest part about, about getting on stage? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, it's the dieting. And if, if uh, no one out there has experienced the hangries, uh, for anybody who's been on stage, you know what uh, carb depletion is, is, is like. Uh, right. In lowering the carbs, our body um, doesn't have a lot of the nutrients that it needs to make serotonin, which, you know, curbs our appetite, but also... Uh, makes us uh, mood elevate. So when you deplete that, you run down your serotonin, and you you get you can get grumpy, you can get uh, yeah uh, edgy with people. Let's just put it. But it is in a way, it's a good meditation mm -hmm. because it reminds you you are in control of your mood and behavior, the way you respond, and that you can use still your mind and caution yourself. Okay. I know that's the physical attributes. I know that's the neurochemical attributes that are going on, but I can still maintain being a good person, being a kind person and being respectful around others. It's, it's a good meditation. I found it to be a good meditation to try to overcome those things. But it also shows you just how important eating good, healthy food is for the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. I just watched a um, video with um, the chef that does Hell's Kitchen. Um, uh, the British guy. I forget. Yes. yes. <laughs> so Ramsey, Chef Ramsey. Yeah, Chef Ramsey. Yeah, Chef Ramsey. So he goes to see Sadhguru, who mm -hmm. uh, is a uh, uh, a Swami in the, in in the in India, and uh, and he puts him on a vegetarian diet for two days. And oh my God, he's like, oh my God, I'm so much calmer. I'm so much more centered. <laughs> and he goes. I didn't think food could do this to you. And, you know, this guy's notorious for being hot and <laughs> reactive. <laughs> and just in two days, you could see on camera a marked change in his constitution. It's incredible. So, and I encourage people like you, you experimented for a month, right? Mm -hmm. Is to just try changing up your diet for a short period of time and then listen, really listen to your body. And, and ask people, do you see a difference in me? Do you, can you feel a difference in me? Mm -hmm. I think you'll be surprised what you hear. And it may make you say, well, shoot, then why am I not doing this all the time? Right. And, and, and that's a good question. I think you kind of came to a little bit of that on your own too as well. Huh? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. 
Well, God, I think we could talk forever on this, but uh, <laughs> such a pleasure. I'd love to have you back sometime to talk about uh, more because I know you're going to get that pro card. So maybe yeah. that'll be a good time to come and celebrate. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, <laughs> I, it, the plan was this year. I, I I was ready, but it, you know, with everything that happened with the with the pandemic, it it just kind of pushed things down. But it'll it'll happen. <laughs> so, any shout outs you want to give, uh, or um, let people know how they can get in touch with you or follow you on social media? Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Well, of course, I got to shout out Monk. Uh, we we actually just text today. We're gonna train tomorrow, so <laughs> oh, and, which I'm looking forward to because it, it's nice. It's actually it's nice. To train. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to train with someone, especially someone that pushes you. Um, mm -hmm. So so that's great. Um, and let's see. Uh, so yeah, you can. I'm probably most active on uh, Instagram, and my Instagram is Skinny Boy. Like it's spelled here, Skinny Boy Vegan Gains. Um, or you can just type in Jamal Collins because my name is there as well. Um, and on fa on Facebook is just Jamal Collins. Um, and on TikTok is Skinny Boy, S K N Y B O I, um, which is also my license plate. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's, it's funny plate. Because... California vanity plates, right? Was that? Yes, yeah, California vanity plates. <laughs> It's funny because I, I see people like they'll look at my like come up from behind. They'll look at my uh, license plate and then they'll look in my car to try to see. <laughs> <what I'm> like. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, behind me. So good stuff to have you on here. Yeah, I look forward to having another conversation with you and seeing you uh, hold up that pro card because I know you're going to get it. Your great accomplishments. Thanks for our, all that you're doing for this movement and being such a great example for others. And um, yeah, uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I'm sure we'll be sharing a stage or or near it at one of these times in the future. I love uh, that. We'll have the um, uh, the sequel to uh, the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship in 2021. That's the goal. It was supposed to happen this year, but of course, because of the pandemic. Um, like many other events, they were put on hold. Um, but I hope, uh, hopefully, if things clear up and get back to anywhere semblance of normal, uh, we will uh, plan to have the uh, World Vegan Bodybuilding, and I hope you can make it out for that one. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. I, I've, been, I've been itching to compete. <laughs> I've been so, I was so ready. Like, every time I thought it was going to happen here, it just didn't. So I, I'm... I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> awesome. Well, we got some great uh, guests coming up next week. We're going to have uh, Dr. Adam Woods, who goes by the vegan shrink. But he also did something that blew me away. And you want to tune in because he won the weight loss challenge. So tune in next week if you're watching this live. If not, if you're watching this in the future, do check out the other videos with Dr. Adam Ardini, and I hope you enjoyed this one with Jamal. Good friend. Always good to see you, my friend. Likewise. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.